Alrighty guys, it's Saturday, it's the weekend, and I've got a lot to talk about. This is all uh, car related too, so it's diecast related. Now I don't really do uh, Hot Wheels Matchbox uh, 164 scale, uh, scale car news, but there is a lot going on that I think I should talk about, being that my last video where I did this, where I talked about the Hot Wheels Supreme uh, team transport car hauler, got some pretty good views and you guys liked my opinions so um first things first matchbox is a brand that i noticed doesn't get a lot of love here well doesn't get a lot of love in our diecast community i don't know if it's due to their distribution where like me a lot of you guys can't find them and you actually have to go out and go to places you wouldn't think you would be able to find diecast you actually find them like for me it's been a lot of weird places like drugstores and five below go figure um and with five below it's usually they're a year behind so it's a lot of stuff that i missed out on my walmart did start stocking some newer matchboxes but it's mostly like the sets and then this will be important to you guys keep this in mind uh they also started stocking the moving parts well matchbox just finally released an official picture of the moving parts diecasts and I'll have that in a second so that seems really cool we get a Tesla we get a Camaro we get a Jeep which I'm not those I'm not too fond of but we get a new Crown Victoria with opening rear doors which will be really cool that being said, I can't wait for the premiums, which will have rubber tires and opening doors, and then we'll get that Matchbox uh, BMW i8, which will be really cool. Um, that'll go in my Matchbox dealership if you guys have been following the channel. Uh, that'll Yeah, that'll definitely go in there, and then I'm working on a couple other cars, maybe. And that I want to kind of keep as a display item. So that's really cool. Matchbox is kind of stepping it up a bit with the moving parts. Again, prices are going to be about a dollar extra, so close to two to three dollars, depending where you are and tax. Um, next is uh, Auto World, which is another diecast that I diecast brand that I really like, but it's it's hit or miss where I am. Sometimes you find stuff, sometimes you don't. And the weirdest thing is, it's mostly, it's not weird, but it's mostly around Christmas time where you find the big, big releases from Auto World. Like the Cadillacs, or the Station Wagons, um, about that. Auto World is releasing its first truck casting. They have a picture of a square body Chevrolet, which I'll actually put down here. Or, not down in the description, but you guys will probably see it soon. So that's cool. Um, you know, M2 is also doing a square body, and Greenlight is also doing a square body. The only thing is, I think Auto World will have the edge, being that they pride themselves on being exactly 164 scale. So, needless to say, though, if you are like me and you just pick up any brand, you know, I've bought even off name cars. I have some off-name cars from my past, like one that I remember that I can't find anymore was a white Toyota Camry from about 2005. Best, like, detail, you know, it made Hot Wheels, you know, it really made Hot Wheels look bad. But um, I think Auto World kind of takes this one with their uh, square body. The only thing is, it's going to be hard to find, I guarantee you. Um... You know, Hot Wheels has always been doing the 80s Silverados. This, in the picture, it's a 70 Chevrolet Cheyenne uh, C10. Greenlight has that already out. I don't know what they're doing at M2, but I was actually at a collector's con, and I couldn't really... They didn't make a, a sign a non-disclosure agreement or anything, but they just uh, Sean Taylor just said, please don't say anything. So I've been holding that in. I knew that uh, um, M2 was coming out with a uh, 
uh, square body Chevrolet, which would be cool for customizers. You know, those who are new to customizing, if you want want to, if you always want to do a, always wanted to do a square body, I advise you to pick up a um, M2 because you can. They're just held together by screws. You can take those apart. The Auto World version, though, I think we're going to get a little bit better detail, better size wheels. You know, probably good tire, good rim combinations. They said they're doing a stock ride height and a lowered ride height, which would be cool. I wonder if they're going to put little things in the beds like um, like campers and things like that. I remember reading somewhere that they were going to do that. But Anyway, that's Auto World. Next is the world of Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels is doing some pretty big things. Uh... I saw this on T-Hunted first, but I don't want, usually like to say anything because T-Hunted sometimes, they don't really do, and it's not their fault, it's everybody's excited about what's the new Hot Wheels or Matchbox or Tarmac Works or Greenlight or M2 release. Um, you know, sometimes they get pictures from people who are not supposed to be taking pictures of the samples in the factory as the cars come down the line, but... Um, this has been verified by the Hot Wheels Dream Team. I have the picture. I'll actually put it right here. So what they have is a Bugatti Chiron, which will be really popular. This is the first time in my time remembering, in my time of serious collecting, that you can actually get a licensed Bugatti uh casting from Hot Wheels. So with that being said, um, this isn't going to stay on the pegs. However, I don't think it's going to have the same, and this is just me, take this with a grain of salt, I don't really think it's going to have the same collector value as the Bugatti Veyron did. And I'm not saying that as a kid sitting here being jealous sour grapes because I don't have one. Uh, William Winters was nice enough to give me uh, a Bugatti Veyron, and I still felt weird about taking it from him. But he gave it to me, and he's like, just take it. And I'm like, okay. You know, it was funny. I was at his house after a toy convention, and he's like, you know, got a couple of Bugatti sitting here. And I'm like, yeah, you're the one who has this. And he's like, you want one? Go ahead, take it. So I guarantee you those are going to be hard to find, the Cherry on the new Bugatti that's coming out. Because people are going to want them. And people are going to go back to when it was the Bugatti Veyron and probably are going to stockpile them. So just be, just be, uh, you know, be ready to one and go, be ready that you're not going to find them real quick. Although I don't know with Hot Wheels the way their distribution is. It seems like if you wait long enough, about a month, you'll find what you're looking for. That's just my experience. The one thing I do miss though is Hot Wheels used to do a lot more muscle cars and they used to do a lot of crazier things with muscle cars. I have some old muscle cars that I just detailed not that long ago. And I don't know. I mean, I like the J, uh, the JDM stuff and some of the European stuff. Don't get, excuse me, don't get me wrong, but some of it, some of the, uh, some of it's too hyped. Like even in the RLC castings now, you're seeing a lot of the Honda S2000, the, um, What's the other one? The Bluebird 510 by Dotson. I feel like those castings have kind of been beat to death. But, I don't know. There's probably people who will disagree with me. Anyway, that's my little bit of die-cast news. I don't, you know, I collect just about every brand. So, in one way or another, um, that's just that. So, I hope you guys liked it. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And, I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.